Hello everyone and welcome back to Flying Through the Helicopter Flying Handbook. This video is all about Chapter 4. Chapter 4 is about helicopter components, sections, and systems. So the first thing that is discussed in Chapter 4 are different kinds of rotor systems. So the first one they begin with is the semi-rigid rotor system and they have a nice little bell helicopter here in the photo that they're going to use for an example of what that looks like. I have here in the sim a Robinson R44. So this is an R44 rotor system and you'll notice that it has a couple of different axes and we've talked a little bit about this in previous videos and you'll notice that if I pull up on the collective it's going to change the pitch and how does that work we have the stationary swash plate down here below and then we have our rotating swash plate that's going to transfer that movement to my blades. So what else do we see here? We have a couple of other hinges. We have this big hinge right here and that's a teetering hinge. Now this is what they call a semi-rigid underslung system. So an advantage of the underslung system is that because the hinge point is above the rotor blades, when I tilt or seesaw, if you will, the rotors, it does not change the center of gravity of each rotor blade much. And that reduces stress in the plane of the rotors themselves. Right. So when we look at a fully articulated system, for example, there will be additional hinges, lead lag or drag hinges on that rotor system, which aren't present here. So this is going to have to absorb those stresses. So that is the semi-rigid underslung system as found in some of the bells and also as found in all of the Robinsons. Okay, I also wanted to include this from the Helicopter Flying Handbook. They have a little picture. And here in this system, you can see the teetering hinge. You have the pitch horn that is used to change the pitch of the rotor blades. We have the feathering hinge, which allows the pitch of the blades to be changed. Here's your main rotor mast. And notice that we have these static stops. Now, as you're probably aware, the Robinsons have their own special FAR, SFAR 73, which is all about the additional ways that a Robinson can kill you. And a lot of that revolves around the rotor system that is used in the Robinson. It's a two-blade, semi-rigid, underslung system and it's also very low inertia and those two things combine so that you have to give them proper respect or you can get into some pretty bad situations including ones where you know you end up chopping off your tail and that's not great uh, there's other situations where you can end up losing your entire main rotor and that's probably even worse so how does that happen? What happens is if the blades become unloaded, they can kind of free float, if you will. And this thing is not really constrained and it's going to tilt back and forth. You're going to hit against these static stops and you'll get something called mast bumping. So with mast bumping what happens is the thing teeters too much 
hits the static stops while it's rotating and it hits them hard. It, it'll sound like a sledgehammer being taken to that rotor mast. And guess what? You can do this badly enough that it will shear off the main rotor mast, which is obviously not a great thing. So I definitely wanted to mention that uh, about the semi-rigid underslung systems, especially given the popularity of the Robinsons. So the next kind of rotor system that is discussed in the book is the rigid rotor system. So what is that all about? Uh, basically, this is something you'll see on a few helicopters, such as the Red Bull helicopter you've probably seen. And the only hinges are for feathering or changing the pitch. So here's a rotor head. You can see you have the pitch changing links and there's the feathering hinges. You have this hub. Now this hub has been made out of a solid chunk of titanium usually. So this thing is going to absorb the combination of this and the blades, which are usually carbon fiber, are going to absorb the flexing, so the flapping, if you will, stresses, and also the lead lag stress. So this is a very simple rotor system, and it's very strong, because it has to be, but it's also very expensive. So, you know, it has some pluses and minuses, as does everything else, and we'll discuss more about that later. So that is the rigid rotor system, which is not extremely popular, but it does exist. Okay, so let's talk about the fully articulated system. That's a pretty popular system that you will find in things like your trusty Schweitzer and other helicopters. It's pretty popular with multi-bladed helicopters, you know, above two, that is. So you're going to have different hinges, and we'll look at the helicopter in a second. And one of those is the lead lag, or sometimes called the drag hinge. And what does that do? So if you think of a three-bladed helicopter like the Schweitzer, normally those blades are 120 degrees apart. But because of stresses such as when they flap up that changes the CG it's just like the little figure skater so when you flap up it's going to try to accelerate or lead the normal position and when you drop that rotor blade when it flaps downward it's going to decrease its speed and it's going to go to the lagging position. So we have a hinge for that and then we normally have some sort of dampener as well. And then we have a flapping hub in addition to some other hinges that we might have. So how does it look on the helicopter? Here we have our actual helicopter. And once again, we have down here below, we have our stationary swash plate. And once again, if I raise the collective, you'll see how it changes the pitch on all of the blades. So I've got my pitch hinge or feathering hinge right there. And here are my lead lag hinges. And here are the dampeners. And you'll notice that each of the blades also has a flapping hinge. So the hub can flap as a unit. And also, each of these blades will individually flap and lead and lag. So that's the fully articulated system. So what are the pluses and minuses of these different systems? So if I look at an articulated system, it's pluses, it gives me good control response, 
uh, downsides high aerodynamic drag and it's slightly more complex and more expensive than say a semi-rigid system semi-rigid system what are its advantages uh, it's simple and I, I think a big advantage is it's easier to hanger right if you have a couple of Robinsons or a couple of bells you can just stack those in the hanger they don't take up a lot of real estate you know if you look at some of the military helicopters of course they have a system where you can essentially fold up the blades for easy storage but most helicopters don't have that. what are some downsides it's not as quick as an articulated system to respond it can be better or not better but higher levels of vibration and you know we talked already about things like mast bumping and other downsides which are substantial to the semi-rigid system and then we have rigid what's the plus simple design very crisp on the responses but you might have higher vibration because it's not fully articulated and that you know expensive rotor system is absorbing all those stresses uh, something else we've talked about before and we'll just mention it here again is the freewheeling unit this is the thing that allows you to be able to do an auto rotation so when both the inner and outer parts are turning at the same speed these little guys inside of it they are touching both surfaces now if the outer surface or ring if you will decides to turn faster than the inner surface which let's say is your engine now these are going to tilt and this allows the outer surface to just slide because I don't have a hard connection anymore between these two and that's really what a free reeling unit is now just a little terminology if you're flying a Robinson and you look in the books you will not see references to a free wheeling unit you will see references to a Sprague clutch which is the exact same thing that's just what Robinson happens to call it now how can I check this free wheeling unit during my pre-flight it is very easy to do in the Schweitzer at least what I can do is the free wheeling unit is installed here inside of this pulley if I turn my pulley one direction by hand obviously this is with the belts not tightened during my pre-flight I should not spin the tail rotor it should just go oh well we're freewheeling here so we're not going to turn this tail rotor shaft and if I turn it the opposite direction it should try to turn the tail rotor and that's all you have to do to check the freewheeling unit